Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topics are price matching and low price guarantees. Think about the standard Bertrand competition framework. We have in a duopolistic setting, two firms simultaneously choosing a price. That is the idea behind Bertrand competition. You compete on price. Those firms have symmetric marginal costs of production. And we have a single consumer with a reservation price that is larger than that marginal cost of production. And all this single consumer is doing is choosing which firm to purchase from. That's your basic Bertrand competition framework. The wrinkle that we are adding today in this lecture is that each firm has a low price guarantee. What that means is that if the other firm offers a lower price, it will match that price. You probably observe these sorts of low price guarantees in your day-to-day -day life. You might think about a local grocery store chain that will honor competitors' coupons. And you can think about how big box retailers will match the prices on competitors' websites so that all you have to do is at the checkout stand, show on your phone the competitor's website, and the cashier will punch in the price of the competitor. There are variants of this as well. Maybe there are some firms out there that not only match the price, but also offer to beat it by 10%. The logic that we're going to be uncovering with just a basic low price guarantee that just matches the price is going to follow in those more complicated schemes. The thing is that those more complicated schemes, by virtue of being more complicated, require a little bit of more mathematics to fool around with. So we're not going to have extra variables floating around in our model when we can just have the simpler model and get to the basic idea behind price matching. Now, speaking of that basic idea behind price matching, I think if you were to stop for a moment and try to work out who this is going to be advantageous for, you would probably come to the conclusion that this has to be great for the consumer. After all, the consumer is able to leverage competitors' prices under these price matching schemes. But what we're going to see is that that's not actually the case. It's not clear that these price matching scenarios are good for consumers. It might actually be very bad. If you want to think about why that might be the case, now is a good time to pause this lecture. But if you're ready to understand the logic of why price matching might not be so great for the consumer, well, let's get to it. First, let's discuss the equilibrium of a game without low price guarantees, your standard Bertrand competition that we've covered previously. Well, when we have firms with identical marginal costs of production, the equilibrium price is C, that marginal cost of production. So, in that scenario, we have an outcome that is very good for the consumer. The firms are getting no profit out of this. They are selling the good at what it costs them to make it. So all of the value of the trade is flowing to the consumer. Without low price guarantees, we have a very good outcome for the consumer. What we're going to observe with low price guarantees is that the equilibrium price can be as large as the consumer's reservation value. That means that in that particular equilibrium, the consumer is really poorly off. They're doing no better than if no trade had transpired, and all of that surplus is going to the firms. Let's think about why these low price guarantees can actually backfire on the consumer. First, let's note that the consumer is always indifferent between firms when we have low price guarantees. If the firms are offering the same price, well, this is obvious. They're offering the same price. The consumer is getting the same price regardless of where the consumer goes. So the consumer is indifferent. The trick to low price guarantees is that if firms offer different prices, the actual price the consumer pays with either is the same. If one firm is offering a price of $20 and the other firm is offering a price of $40, the consumer could go to the $20 firm and pay $20 or go to the $40 firm and still pay $20. So the consumer is indifferent. Let's think about what happens if the firms choose the same price. 
the expected payoff to a firm is A times the quantity of P minus C, where A is the probability that the consumer is choosing that firm. And we're thinking about this generally, of course, because as we just saw on the previous slide, the consumer is indifferent. So the consumer could potentially go to one firm or the other firm or randomize between those firms, maybe flip a coin and go to one firm on heads and another firm on tails. So A is that probability of sale. And if you think about what's in those parentheses, we have a P minus C, that is the price of the good minus the cost of producing it. So that's how much profit is coming in and you're just multiplying it by the probability that the firm is actually getting that profit and it's not going to the other firm. Now let's think about deviations. If the firm were to deviate to something greater, then it's still going to get a payoff of A times P minus C. That's because the price is not changing. If you raise your price while the other firm is staying constant, then the consumer is still getting the good at the price that is the lowest, which is the price that the other firm is offering. So raising your price in isolation does not actually change your payoff. There is no profitable deviation there. If you deviate to something smaller, well, now you are forcing the price lower. Instead of having a price of P, there's a price of P minus D, where D is the reduction in the price, the discount on that price. So as a consequence, if you lower your price, you're actually worse off. So all told, there is no profitable deviation. If both of the firms are offering the same price, neither firm can profitably deviate. But that means it is an equilibrium for both of the firms to choose a price equal to the consumer's reservation value of V. And if you think about how that's going to work out for consumer welfare, well, like we previewed, it's very bad for the consumer. Low price guarantees, at least up front, seem great. The problem is there is a hidden downside. And that is that offering higher prices becomes credible. The concern under standard Bertrand competition is that if a firm offers a high price, it needs to be worried that its competitor will undercut it. But when you have a low price guarantee, it becomes impossible for your opposition to undercut you because whatever your opposition may undercut you by, you can offer to match that. And so as a consequence, it becomes credible to offer higher prices and both firms in fact can choose to do that. This results in a major difference in the welfare of the consumer. Under normal Bertrand competition, we have the consumer receiving all of the surplus. With matching of prices and Bertrand competition, we have an equilibrium where the consumer, in fact, is receiving none of the surplus. And that's not great for the consumer. But it is, of course, great for the firms. The firms are very happy here. And this is a very big difference, of course, from the firm's perspective as well, where under regular Bertrand competition, the firms are in really bad shape, but here with price matching, the firms can actually be in pretty good shape. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. Hope to see you next time. Take care.